Let's get started. Now, last month, we all saw distressing pictures coming from the Kabul airport. Afghans hanging on to U.S. military jets. Mothers handing over their babies in search for a better life. Hundreds queuing up to board airplanes with just one suitcase. The Afghan troop pullout was a disaster and the Pentagon leaders were grilled in Congress over the withdrawal. Take a look. Is it true that we actually did tabletop exercises and we never assumed that there could be an immediate collapse of the Afghan government? We poured money and support and air cover and the Afghan government continued to fail. The situation was deteriorating rapidly by July. Why was an action taken to secure the Kabul airport? Once President Biden made the decision to have U.S. forces leave the country, who designed the evacuation? Worst of all, 13 brave Americans were killed in the evacuation. We told our interpreters, our driver, that we would not abandon them, and that's exactly what we did. But if all this is true, General Milley, why haven't you resigned? Now, here are some of the big takeaways from the session. The first, the Pentagon has maintained that the Taliban was and is a terror group. This raises pertinent questions on the U.S. State Department's official stance vis-a-vis -vis future recognition or limited diplomatic dealings with the Taliban. Secondly, the general said that the Taliban have not broken their ties yet with the Al-Qaeda, despite the 2020 Doha agreement specifically binding the insurgent group to severe all ties with terror groups like the ISIS Khorasan and the Al-Qaeda. The Pentagon warned that those links were still intact. The generals admitted that the threat of a reconstituted al-Qaeda was very real. They also hinted at the possibility of more attacks by the al-Qaeda and ISIS Khorasan. A reconstituted al-Qaeda or ISIS with aspirations to attack the United States is a very real possibility. And those conditions to include activity in ungoverned spaces could present themselves in the next 12 to 36 months. That mission will be much harder now, but not impossible, and we will continue to protect the American people. The Pentagon wanted to retain a small military presence in Afghanistan. General Mark Milley had proposed keeping 2,500 troops in the country. The CENTCOM commander was also in favor of maintaining its military presence. The testimony of both America's top generals directly contradicts what President Biden said in mid-August saying that he wasn't given the option to keep troops in Afghanistan after the withdrawal deadline. I'm speaking to you today. Senator Tom Cotton grilled the two generals about this. It seems there was some sort of delay in relaying military advice to President Biden. Listen in. General Milley, uh, Joe Biden has said that it was the unanimous, the unanimous recommendation of the Joint Chiefs that we not maintain a military presence beyond August 31st. We've heard testimony to that effect today as well. When was that unanimous recommendation sought and presented to the president? You're talking about the 31 August? Yes, the 31 August deadline. So, for getting so out on of here. 25 August, I was asked to make an assessment, provide best military advice. On I'm sorry, my time is limited here. Okay. You just get, you gave me the answer that I needed here. August 25th? That's correct. Kabul right. fell on August 15th. That's correct. You were not asked before right. August 25th? 16th. On August 25th, I was asked to provide best military assessment as whether we should keep military forces past the 31st. Secretary Austin, was anybody asked before August 25th if we should keep troops at the Kabul airport? This is uh, the president tasked us to to make to provide an assessment on whether or not uh, we should extend our, our presence uh, beyond August 31st. And as General Milley just said. That assessment was uh, was made. We tasked him to make that assessment on the 25th, and uh, he came back and provided his best military advice. Secretary, Kabul fell on August 15th. It was clear that we had thousands of Americans. It was clear to members of this committee who were getting phone calls that we had thousands of Americans in Afghanistan behind Taliban lines on August 15th, and it took 10 days to ask these general officers if we should extend our presence. I suspect the answer might be a little different if you were asking them 16 days out, not five days out. Also, the officials admitted intelligence failures, both while the military was deployed and later from over the horizon. The U.S. military severely underestimated the deep-rooted corruption across several branches in the Afghan military and the government. 
The Doha agreement was also in focus with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin saying that President Biden saw no future or progress with the Doha negotiations. We helped build a state, Mr. Chairman, but we could not forge a nation. The fact that the Afghan army that we and our partners trained simply melted away in many cases without firing a shot took us all by surprise and it would be dishonest to claim otherwise. We need to consider some uncomfortable truths. That we didn't fully comprehend the depth of corruption and poor leadership in the senior ranks. That we didn't grasp the damaging effect, <coughs> effect of frequent and unexplained rotations by President Ghani of his commanders. That we didn't anticipate the snowball effect caused by the deals that the Taliban commanders struck with local leaders in the wake of the Doha Agreement. And that the Doha Agreement itself had a demoralizing effect on Afghan soldiers. Another key takeaway was the rift between the Pentagon and the U.S. military, with General Milley admitting that the U.S.'s credibility had taken a hit and Pentagon Chief Lloyd Austin maintaining it was solid and intact. But the Pentagon Chief did admit lapses in the U.S. over-the-horizon intelligence capabilities, which resulted in a drone strike killing 10 innocent civilians in Kabul. We on World is One has been questioning the Pentagon claims since the day of the strike. Our correspondent Anas Malik sent several reports from the site of the tragedy. He also spoke to the victim's kin who called for justice. U.S. Defense Secretary Austin even admitted that he had not followed up with the air crew that gave the order to strike, but the U.S. military has initiated a three-star review of the incident. Our correspondent Susan Tehrani has sent us more details in this next report from New York. Take a look. The Pentagon's leaders and the top general who led America's withdrawal from Afghanistan testified on Capitol Hill on Tuesday in what was a contentious session about America's longest war, but also about how top officials handled talks with their counterparts from China and Russia. One of the main takeaways was that both General Milley and McKinsey admitted under oath that they had advised U.S. President Joe Biden to keep several thousand troops in Afghanistan. Now, these comments are in direct contradiction to what President Biden had said back in August in a national televised address that no one warned him not to withdraw troops from the country. This prompted numerous top Republican lawmakers to go online and write quote unquote, Biden lied, including Senator Tom Cotton, who tweeted this. Joe Biden lied when he said he wasn't warned. He lied when he said we evacuated Americans. And he lied when he said Afghanistan's withdrawal was, quote unquote, an extraordinary success. Now, Tom Cotton was at that hearing and he had the opportunity to pose questions to the top Pentagon's leaders as well as the general at one point asking General Milley why he hadn't resigned yet. Susan Tehrani reporting from New York for We On World is One. We On World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.